All right, so let's talk about this thing called creating momentum, and let's put it in terms of, of creating a ritual. So how do we have a morning ritual that creates energy for our day? How do we do that? How do we create something that makes us more effective every single day? Okay, don't sleep in. That's a good start. Ice bath. Ice bath. <laughs> Not my favorite thing, but I know it is effective. My, my, my buddy Tony's got, he's built a pool. It's, it's literally not even from here to there. It's not even like a size of a jacuzzi. It's just a little teeny hole and it goes down deep enough that he can actually just jump straight in. And it's like, I don't know, 30 degrees or something crazy like that. It's like, ah, oh. anyway, he does it every single morning. All right. So to be a champion in your world, to be a champion of, of business, to be a champion in, in your, um, in your space, one thing you got to do is you're going to have to figure out how to prepare. If we were a champion in sports, we'd be training. We'd be, right, we'd be in, in doing the things that are necessary to build muscle, to get faster. We'd be working on things that make us better. In real estate, hardly anybody does that. Now, there are a few. There are a few who will practice scripts. I've never been a real script fan, and I'll tell you why. When they call you and say, come list me, it doesn't take many words to get them. I like it when you're, they're calling you. Amy, is that true? Yes. Amy's three built a, this three this week where Amy got come list me's. I think that beats the living daylights out of, you want to buy or sell anything? You want to buy or sell anything? You know anybody who's selling or buying? You know, it's like, so if you, if you really need it, but I, I'm just telling you from a personal standpoint that we have to start preparing and training. So morning rituals, five to six days a week. I don't know how many days you're working. That's up to you. I'm not gonna tell you how to do this. I just wanna give you the things to put into it, the framework for building it. Uh, morning momentum questions. I've got those ready for you. They're gonna be up on a site for you to download them, energize your morning and be able to recreate it anytime. See, I want you to be able to do this, not when times are good, not when you're on fire. There's a song, I don't remember if it was the 70s or the 80s, but it was somewhere in there that says, when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. You're not. You're not. How many have ever experienced that in business? Like you're on fire, things are great, everything I touch turns to gold. Everything sucks right now, I can't get anything going. And if we can't change that, we're in trouble. We're hoping the market shifts, we're hoping something changes, we're hoping something external. No, we've gotta be able to fire it up ourselves and change from the inside. So visualize and practice, visualizing. I saw Jane close her eyes when we were talking about uh, her future and the vision for her future. She closed her eyes and went into a, a, you know, a little bit of a state where I could see she was just like trancing out going, yeah, what do I want it to look like? And what does it look like? And what's the vision for it? So we've got to visualize our success, expanding your love and feeling gratitude. I believe that that's a good start and foundation for everything coming from a place of love. Love is the highest vibration, period. If you look at color schemes, love is it. Whether you believe in Jesus or Buddha or what you believe in, love has always been, by, in every religion, it's always love. Now, some people have funny ways of showing it in certain places, right? But, but it's always about love. It's the highest vibration. Gratitude right there next to it. Gratitude is the same vibration. Lowest vibration, doubt and fear. Highest vibration, love, right? So where are you going to be uh, bringing your energy from? Not from doubt. I'm not sure. I don't think I can. I've never been like that. It's never been my style. I don't know how. Like that's a different place than I got this. And then by the way, having an evening ritual. So we've got all that in there. I've given you this. You, um, you can take a picture of it. Uh, you could try and write all these things down, but I might say, suggest a picture and then write them down later. But I'm going to suggest to you that something like this would be a great ritual. Now that said... Your version of it's really important, not my version of it. I'm going to tell you how to figure this whole thing out there, and I'll tell you how to go and use what we talked about earlier today, because the deal is this. What did we say? Begin with the what in mind? The end in mind. If we wanted to do a routine, a ritual in the morning that energizes us and puts us in a place that has the most possibility of creating success, do we want to start at what time we wake up or do we want to start at the end when we go to work? 
Yes, but when do we want to focus on what's the, what's the big point that says this is what we have to get to? And the answer is it's right there. What time are we going to go to work? What time do we start our business? Once I know that, everything else rolls back from there. So what time is your start time? Be clear, your business. What time are you in business? Not waking up. What time are you in business? You are ready. You're on the phones. You're waiting. You're making things happen. You're at what time? Like what time is your business open? Nine. I'm fine with that. 8.30. Eight. I'm sure that some of you would say 7.30. You know, if you're telling me six, unless you're in some international business, I don't understand you, but that's okay. I'm going to suggest to you that whatever that morning time is, that start time, write that number next to 14. And then I want you to start backing up through these things. And I want you to look at what are the things in here that would make sense for me, that I would like to do. What thing in here makes me energized? By the way, we can jump way over here to the early, wake up early, and that means we're going to go back through this and go backwards and see what things we can do at the same time. For example, I might be on the treadmill or on this crazy machine that it takes me back and forth and back and forth. I don't know what it's called, but I do this and I do this. and It's really awesome. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a... It's not, no, it's not, it's not like an elliptical. It goes back and forth this way. It's really cool. Anyway, I love it. But I can be on there and I can be listening to a podcast or I can be on there and watching a, uh, a YouTube or I can be on there and listening to an Audible. So I can do multiple things sometimes as long as they're brainless acts, I can do that, right? I can go for a walk and be listening to something. But if I go back over here to wake up early, you know, that hour is probably earlier than right now most of you are used to. Because we want to set up a, ro a winning morning ritual we're going to have to set up our wake-up hour based on getting the stuff done that's important. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're going to back walk all the way into this. So you would start off with, then eventually you come back to the time. You go, okay, so it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Or it's 5.15 or 5.30 or 4.30, whatever time it is. I'm going to wake up at that time. I'm going to get up immediately. And even while I'm in bed or I've got my meditation chair, I'm going to go there and pray and meditate, praying, I believe, is called talking to God and meditation, I believe, is called listening to God. Some people don't meditate. They only pray, and that's good, but sometimes you ought to listen. And then um, there's gratitude. You could actually have some gratitude and think about what it is that you're wanting to be grateful for, what's already in your life. Do you know in 2009, I retired. In 2009, I started doing a seminar for realtors, and I was in a place, I was, fortunately, I was really doing well at the time, and I was in a place where I could give entirely, and I started touring with a seminar and was going into companies that used to pay me big bucks and they weren't paying me a dime. I was just coming in and said, what, you're not charging us? I said, no. What are you going to sell? I said, nothing. They said, why? I said, because I can. And I said, right now people need hope. They've lost their cars, their houses. They've lost everything. They've lost, they've lost everything. And I would go into these offices and people would walk in you know, for the, a sales meeting and they'd walk out and their mascara was had run down their face and they're like, I don't know what you put us through, but oh my gosh, this was incredible. But we had to get them to feel, right, to, to heal, to deal with it, right? And so a lot of that was spent in, in helping people to sort of reorganize. But the, the, the part about gratitude was so phenomenal. I would ask this question, what's the best part about being you? And I was thinking that would be easy. Let's talk about the best part. Then we'll talk about the worst part. And I'd say, well, what's the best part about being you? And I had people break into tears and they'd say, I can't think of anything right now that's good. They were so focused on what wasn't working, what was bad. They couldn't even for, the, for any sake see anything good. And I'd say like, do you have kids? Yeah, I have kids. Are they healthy? Yes. Let's start there. Let's start there. Let's I, just try and refocus them, redirect them, right? They couldn't think of anything. So we've got to get to this part of, of gratitude, morning questions. So I've got morning questions and evening questions for you that will direct your mind in the morning to a great day that will in the evening allow you to really consolidate everything you've learned in the day and put it into use while the mind is working actively at night and creating your future. Uh, reading 15 minutes or watching a podcast or anything that's learning, protein shakes, absolutely. Try and get something in your, your system immediately that, that fuels your body. Give, put protein in like almost immediately, warm water and protein, great stuff. And then breakfast eventually and number 12 is question marks because I don't know what else you'd want to add. It could be sex. I have no idea what it's going to be, but I'm <laughs> just saying I've left room for stuff and creativity <laughs> that you can do for yourself and create whatever you want. But it's your ritual. It's not mine, it's yours. You follow me? 
Here's the, here's the morning questions, which I love. Create the life you want one day at a time. When I, when I start counting my blessings, my whole life turned around. Willie Nelson. So I've got those morning questions for you. We're going to give those to you guys. Go back. Go back. Oh. Bossy, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to give them to you. We're going to give the full format. You're going to have the whole thing. You're going to get the whole deal. So what are you, what are you grateful for? Not gonna what? I'm not gonna give you the slides. I'm gonna give you the. I'm gonna give you those tools. I'm gonna give you the morning questions, the evening questions, all these tools that I'm talking about. I'm gonna give them to you. Uh, my talent. So again, what are you grateful for? Journal. Keep a journal nearby. Special time with great Marcy, great Marcy and Ted. The the work I get to do in my life. You know, my daughter, my Grand our puppy, grandkids. I mean, whatever it is, right? What are you grateful for? Put it in a journal. Here's the evening questions. I know you're going to want to take pictures again. I'm going to give them to you. <laughs> you know what? I've seen, I've done it myself. I've taken like 30 pictures for one seminar. I never go back and see them. It's like, come on, guys. Let's, let's be real. Take notes. Take notes. All right. So here's what it all comes down to. It all comes down to focus. Focus. You got to focus on the things that really matter. You got to focus on the things that are really going to give you energy. You got to focus in the places that you want more of. Wherever you focus, gives it energy. Wherever you don't focus, gets no energy, right? It's pretty simple. If you really think about it, it's very simple. So Carlos, I think you're, you're, you're with me, but almost, not quite. That's all right. I'm getting you there. Bam. Hit it. Look at you. All right. Perfect. So the straight line approach. I talked about leaving Dallas and getting here. Straight line approach. If we can take the straight line approach with my coaching clients, I always tell them the same thing. The fastest path between here and where you want to be is a straight line. If I can get you there, if I can get you on the straight line, great. The least, the less we can move off course, you know, it's like if I don't talk to you for a month, how off track do you get in 30 days? If I don't talk to you for a week, it's a lot better chance, right? You stay on track for three, four days, get off track for two or three days. You're not that far gone. We can bring you back, but you got to have constant reinforcement because everybody needs that. So here's the deal. Shortest distance between two points, where you are and where you want to be in the someday period. That's awesome. So what's the shortest distance? Obviously the straight line, but what do we do instead? We wake up one morning feeling brilliant as we are, and we think, I've got a great idea. And we do that. <laughs> and you know what? What's interesting is somebody will say to you, wow, that's so smart. How'd you think of that? And you go, on my own, man. It was all my idea. It was good stuff. It's great. And they go, you're just freaking brilliant. And you go, yeah, I am. And then the, you know, the next day, the next week, the next month, you get another idea and you go there and it's like, yeah, that's, it's good. It's good. But if you're taking steps only from here forward, that's what you do. If you're taking steps from the future and coming back, you do it differently. So let me show you what happens when you wake up on months, days, weeks, and make decisions and choices and take actions that may be not connected at all to the path that you had chosen that are just connected to some idea that you've got. Let's see, what shall I do today? I haven't sent a postcard out in my farm. Let's do that. Oh, wow, okay. Sure. For what reason would you do that? To get some business. Oh, okay. Why don't you have a plan instead of just like, I think I'll send a postcard. Just a thought. And then one day you end up there or there. And the challenge is you run out of time and you run out of energy and you didn't hit the goal. You've had a journey for sure. Nothing wrong with that. You've had a journey. I mean, life is about a journey. It's not perfect. Our, our job is to get through it and, and have enjoyment and process and, and really see the love and, and the light all the way through. But the bottom line is you just don't make it. So what if you were to do it differently? What if we were to go all the way out to the someday? Remember we did it earlier today. We said, here's where I want to be someday. And you've envisioned it. You went out and you said, that's where I want to be someday. If you didn't get clear about that, when you leave here today, that should be one of your big things. What do I want in my life in 10 years, five years, eight years, as far, remember we said, as far as you can see, as far as you can see now, go out as far as you can. And then you come back and you say, okay, if I want to be there in 10 
then where do I need to be in five such that I could be on track? If you work it that way, it's always a straight line. Where do I need to be in five? Where do I need to be in three? And we start stepping back. Where do I need to be in 12 months to be there in three and there in five so I can be there someday? Does that make sense, what I'm showing you? Yes. Where do I need to be in six months? Where do I need to be in one month? Somehow I forgot the one month. Where do I need to be in one week? Where do I need to be today? What should I be doing right now? What if now was always connected to the long term? What if now, this moment, was actually connected to some future I had in mind? No, it is, but if you're going a different direction, you're not connecting the dots. What if now was completely connected to the path of your success? that in the moment right now, you were doing things that really were taking you the direction that you were heading to instead of some direction, right? What would happen? How fast could you get there? So my, my time, aha, uh -huh, my own awakening, as I told you, 19 years old, 18 years old with Rome, but by 19, I was really starting to see this time thing. And I started thinking, okay, I get it. I was so infatuated with time that in the 90s and 2000s, I hired two coaches uh, that were super high priced. One of them, his name is David Allen. Does anybody know the book, Getting Things Done? Yeah. Has anybody ever read that book? It's, it might have been the fifth book. I don't think I gave it to you earlier, right? Might have been the fifth book. Getting Things Done. It's one of my very favorite books. Getting Things Done. I hired David Allen when he was, he had just written the book, but he was still really not successful yet. Like it, the book had just come out, but nobody knew him. And I, I hired him for $4,000 a month as a coach for one meeting per month. One day I got, uh, one day I got him for the whole, you know, every, every month I got one day. And I remember David coming and, and giving me stuff to work on and some systems. And I'd say, well, what do I do with this, for example? And he goes, I don't know, what are you going to do with that? I said, well, I pay you for that. He said, no, you're paying me to help you create your system. He said, what are you going to do with that paper, that thing, that, and I was like, I hate you. I'm paying you four grand. You should tell me something, you know? Like, you should, I deserve that. Anyway, I had David Allen as a coach, and I had at the same time a guy that some of you may have heard of named um, Dr. Fred Gross, G-R-O-S-S. -S. And Dr. Fred Gross is a psychologist, a rabbi, an amazing man, uh, still with us, and, uh, you know, maybe in his 80s, uh, just a phenomenon, just a, a remarkable man. And he taught me some incredible stuff, which I want to share with you, actually, because he was charging me $3,500 a month. So I was paying $7,500 a month for coaches. So I apparently valued coaching. Yes? Yes. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what happened, because once I did that, what happened was things exploded. And I want to share with you exactly how. So there's my, my mentor, Jim Rohn. There's me. That's me in the background there, the mustache and all that stuff. That's me. Um, not the redhead, the other guy over there. So I believe that there's four points of leverage for all of us. I'm going to talk about these real quickly. I'm going to give you pieces of all of them. We're going to go through, you know, kind of a, a shortened version. I mean, we could take any one of these and make them all into courses. But number one is going to be uh, systems and processes. And I'm going to tell you that systems and processes, you know, in your business, structure, systems, ways of operating. If you do it twice, you should have a system. If it's something more than once, if it's a one-off, then, you know, it's just a one-off weird thing. But if you're doing it again and again and again, and you don't have a system for it and you have to think and be creative and go, what shall we do with this? You know, if you've got a, a situation with a client and they are, you know, there's a, a problem with a, an appliance and your assistant's trying to take care of it for you and you go, what, they say, what should I do with this? It's going to be $250 and you have to make the decision. Should we do it or should we not do it? I mean, you're, it's taking so much time. Like make a rule. If it's less than 500 bucks, fix it. Like just, let's just fix it. We'll fix it. We'll take care of it. Or if it's less than 300 or less than some number, let's, our procedure is we just fix it. We don't ask, right? So if you have a system for everything, you're going to be in great shape. But the other system that nobody thinks about as a system is time. So I'm going to, that's where we're going to focus our time and attention today. And then marketing. Marketing is another great point of leverage because marketing is not about how many calls can you make. While people are out making a uh, hundred calls. I was talking yesterday with a, a friend of mine about farming, farming. 
And that term, you know, doesn't mean as much today as it once did, but anybody remember what a farm is, a geographic farm? And in the old days, the, the term meant I used to knock doors and I knocked on doors and typically it was three to 500 homes because if you knocked on any more than that, you couldn't make it around the cycle very often. And so they usually had three to 500 homes. We came along with our marketing stuff and we were like, nah, we're going to go direct mail. And while you're knocking on 300 doors, we're going to be knocking on 3000 doors. We're going to kick your butt. And we proved that we did beat everybody. While they were building relationships with 300 people, and by the way, weren't catching most of them at home because in fact, uh, Fuller Brush had already stopped their door knocking and Avon had stopped their door knocking because nobody was home. And I was saying, I can get to them because I can get to their minds through marketing. We were doing direct mail, we were doing web, we were doing all kinds of stuff. But the bottom line is marketing. Marketing is you on steroids. It's you when you're not around. It's you when you're on vacation. Marketing is your greatest leverage because it's out telling the story when you don't want to. It's out telling the story when you can't, when you don't have time. It's out telling the story repetitively again and again. You can't do that. The third one is people. No one succeeds alone. No one. There's no such thing as a self-made millionaire. There's no such thing as a self-made billionaire. Trust me, they've got a lot of people around them. No one succeeds alone. And yet we try and do that in real estate. Well, I'm just going to have a nice little homey business. Well, you're, you're not. You're going to starve. You're going you're gonna to hate your life and you're going to wish you hadn't done that. So let's get some people. Do you, could you have a transaction coordinator today in your life? They're around everywhere. You can hire them. Like nothing. In the old days, you had to like talk to somebody and go, Cassie, you want to split a transaction coordinator? We'll, we'll split an assistant. We'll, like you don't have to do that anymore. There's all these services that are available, right? Today, you can do anything. So people is going to be your third one. And the fourth one is going to be your personal growth. And that has to do with, are you expanding you? Are you getting bigger? Are you playing bigger, being bigger, thinking bigger, creating bigger from you? So let's go to work on those. No one succeeds alone. We know that. Our ability to delegate and use, and by the way, I do an assessment with people. And one of the questions on it is, uh, how would you rate yourself on finding and retaining talent? And in the real estate ranks, when I ask that question, the answer is almost always like, like they, they're questioning, like, what are you even asking? I don't, I don't do that. It's like, I'm like, well, you should be. Like, you should be finding talent. I'm the other day, we're building a real estate company. The other day, I'm in a restaurant with a, a lady here and another friend here. And I said to them, did you notice our waitress? She's a rock star. She walks up to the table. Hi, my name is Michaela, and I'm going to make sure you have excellent service today. And she's bubbly, fiery, fiery red hair, not fake red, you know, dye, but like real fiery red hair. She's like, you know, she's just, you can't not notice her. No. And I said to them, I'm going to get her. She needs to be in real estate. So she came up the next time. I said, are you in fr food services for life? Is this what you're going to do, your chosen field? And she said, no. Nah. She said, I was just thinking about it. I need a new business. I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing. Just got back for four months backpacking in Europe. And she said, I came back. The world seems different. I think I need to do something different. I'm ready for a change. Falls in my lap. But I was looking for talent. And I found it. She's in real estate school now. As a direct result, she's in real estate school. And we're, we're getting her, right? Just because... I'm always looking for talent. So what talent leverage can you hire? Anybody, throw it out. What kind of, who can you hire? What can be hired today? What can be done that leverages you and your life and your time? A video editor. A video editor. We've got a friend, my mortgage guy that I said is going to do a billion dollars. He comes in in the morning. He straps into a microphone just like this. They've got cameras like this in his um, uh, conference room and in his office. And no matter what he's doing, if he's on the phone with clients, they're filming it because they've always, they're taking sound bites from all of it. I said, you need to be a media company. What has he done? He's turned himself into a media company. $40,000 a year, he pays somebody to do that. And when he's not shooting something, he's editing it. He's got social media stuff going out like this, right and left. And what's he turned into? A media machine. Yes, absolutely. So that's a good start. What else can we hire? Admin, for sure. And if you don't want to have a full-time admin or a part-time admin, you don't want somebody down the street, you know, you can get a VA, right? You can get a virtual assistant and they're available through lots of services. We pay people who are very happy with the rates that we pay them in Malaysia and also in uh, the Philippines. And they're excited about five and six dollars an hour. We're excited about it because they're awesome at what they do. And they're a lot less than people that we can pay. Do you understand that you can hire anything today? What else can you hire? Marketing assistant, absolutely. What else can you hire? Uber Eats. Uber Eats. 
I mean, that's absolutely right. I can hire anything. We have uh, shipped delivers food to our door. Shipped is awesome. Like it just saves you. How do you leverage your time? It's all you have. You've got 24 hours. What are you going to do with it? What can you hire? Go ahead. Keep telling me. Uh, what designer? Graphic designer. Graphic designer. Yes. Graphic designer. Yes, for sure. What else? We have that dog poop pickup. Absolutely. Nine, uh, poop 911 is what it's called. He comes in his little rain, rain cap and he's picking up poop. Dogs love him. He gives, gives dogs a treat. 911. Poop. Exactly. Dog walking. I mean, anything you can hire these days. What else can you hire? Photographer. Yes. A stager. Where's our stager? Yes, sir. Absolutely. What else can you? What's that? A trainer. A trainer. What kind of trainer? Health. Health. A, a personal trainer. Absolutely. Trainer. trainer coach. coach. I mean, what coaches do you need? How many coaches do you need for each aspect of your life? How many coaches? Because they're all available. They're all for hire. Housekeeper. Housekeeper. Absolutely, Leslie. Absolutely. What else? Tax prep. Tax prep. Yes. Content writer. Content writer. Absolutely. What else? Bookkeeper. Are you keeping track of some of these guys? This is like stuff you need to be looking at. What we do is we'll look at some of the stuff and Allison will have this idea and it's like, you know, we can't quite do that right this second, but that's what our next hire is going to be. That's our next find. That's our next thing. And then she'll start doing research and boom, somebody's already got the service and it's available in mass quantity for very little money. Boom, there it is. You've got to start thinking about what you need. Where's your leverage points? Why are you doing everything that you don't get paid to do? Who goes to the grocery store? Who goes to the bank? Who goes to the... Why? What are you doing that for? So, but I'm talking about real business stuff, right? Editors, content writers, graphics people. Those are all possibilities right now. Find the bottleneck and hire someone to... There you go. Hire, find the bottleneck in your system and hire somebody to fix that. So here's the thing that no, most people never look at, and that is, well, I can't do it. Uh, I can't find somebody because they're never going to do it as well as I do. Okay, there's the biggest lame brains excuse I've ever heard. So I'm going to tell you something. I ran some numbers. I was just trying to figure out an example. And I was thinking about just hiring an assistant. So here's an agent who makes $50 an hour. Do you know what $50 an hour equates to for a year? 100 grand, 100 grand. So 100 grand, $100,000 a year, and they're making 50 bucks an hour. They hire an assistant. Well, my assistant's not nearly as good as I am. I know they're going to take twice as long to do it as you are. But guess what? You're not going to be doing it. And you're paying them how much? 15, we've got people we're hiring at less than that. 15, 20 at max. Okay, you're, you could be overpaying, but you could, be, you, could, you could also have right talent. I paid $80,000 for an assistant. It was probably a little high and it was the right move. So you pay what you pay, but the point is figure out the numbers, right? So if they're making 80 grand, uh, 40 grand or whatever, whatever you said, and you're making 100 grand, are they still making less than you? And if it takes them twice as many hours, are you still on the plus side? Yes or yes? Yes. yes. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the point. So every time the agent does something that the assistant could have done or that person, that virtual person could have done, it's costing them money to do it themselves. I want you to hear this because I want you to really get the picture. We think we're saving money. We're not. We're costing money. We've got to start getting better at this. And the, this final part is your personal growth because your personal growth is really where it all starts. Jim said, you work harder on yourself than you do on your job, which by the way, he said there, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. But I want you to get this because to me, this is where it all starts. This is the part where it really gets exciting when you start thinking about how can I develop me? I had a, so I was with Jim and I had one of my, the, the leaders of the company was a guy by the name of Ken Lutz. Ken Lutz was an engineer by trade. He was an engineering teacher at um, General Motors University in Detroit. And uh, Ken was an engineer. I'm an, a, a tried and true engineer, but he was a great salesperson. Go figure. I Usually not a match, but awesome at sales. But one thing that Ken said to me one day, he said, do you understand that, you know, he started this example of growing and he said, growing, think of a pipe. And I'm like, what does a pipe have to do with growth? He was an engineer, so you would expect him to come up with this, right? He said, it's a pipe. He said, take a pipe. And if you start putting flow through the pipe, whatever that flow through is, I don't care if it's oil or water or sewage or whatever it is, if you flow through that pipe, 
At some point, you get to capacity. Right? And what happens when you get to capacity and then you push more and you pressurize it and say, I got to get more through there? What happens? Back up or pipe ruptures. So what happens in your life if you are at capacity in yourself? I'm overwhelmed. I can't do anymore. And you, you keep pushing. We just need more stuff, more stuff. We got to do more. I got to do more. What happens? You break down aneurysms, heart attacks, the body, cancers. I mean, lots of bad stuff. It's never good. The body is just showing you something. Yes? So what he said to me that was so simple, he said, why don't you think of yourself as the pipe? Because the truth is it's not too much flow through. It's too small a pipe. What if you just grew the pipe? The same flow through that was rupturing the old pipe doesn't even come close to capacity. doesn't even stretch out anymore. It's not anywhere close. By the way, could you expand the pipe even further? Could you create a bigger pipe? So you don't even feel it anymore. It's like, oh yeah, I can handle that stuff. No big deal. Because you're bigger. So we think we're on overwhelm and the truth is we're not playing big enough. We're not, we're not big enough to handle it. It's us that changes, not the situation. Do you get it? If you get it, say, I get it. I get it. Okay, because like three of you had said it before that. Just want to make sure. So you work harder on your job than you work harder on, your, on yourself than you do on your job. It's all about you. It's going to be starting from there. So in, nothing grows until you do. So let's blast through this real quick. I want to get to the time parts because it's really going to be important for us to get this done. You make the difference. Ask two questions all the time. Ask two questions. What do I need to, to be? Who do I need to be? Who do I need to be different than I've been in the past? Who do I need to be to create the goals and the results that I want? Who do I need to be? What do I need to do differently, right? What do I need to do? Who do I need to be different than I have been in the past such that I can do this better? How do I need to show up differently from how I have in the past? How do I need to show up? What do I need to do? Who do I need to be? I took one of my coaching clients one day and I asked her, I said, we were, we were double, she, she doubled her number and I said, okay, do, it, do me a favor, double it again and let's shoot for that. She goes, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to do that. I don't know how to do what I said and now you're telling me double that. I said, so I'm just asking you to do one thing and all I want you to do is tell me, who do you need to be to make that happen? And she started defining and she goes, you know what, I think I can do this. Because she could see where she could make changes that would impact it and would create the result. If you look at the result, it's like overwhelming. I could never do that much. I could never think that big. I could never have that be possible. But if you start thinking about what can I change, it's all within your control. So here's your exercise. Here's what I want you to write down. What are the areas in your life and your business that you really desire to change? The biggest changes you would like to make this year? We've talked about a lot of things. So by now, your mind is working different than it was uh, two and a half hours ago when you got here and you had your first beer. Um, <laughs> now you've had a couple beers, so you're feeling very free and there's like less you know, constraint and you're going, I can do anything. <clears throat> so I feed, feed you beers and wine. So make a list. What things do you need to change? What things would you like to change? What are the most important things for you to change? What are the things that really stand out in your mind as you've been listening today, as you've been thinking today, as you've been working on it today? What are the things that come to mind? What are those things that you would like to see different? Anybody, throw one out. Time management, consistency, bless you. What else? Organization. Organization, great. What else? Vision, the way you make decisions. Vision, the way you make decisions, great. What else? Being intentional. Being intentional, very good. Love that. What else? More video. <laughs> More video, absolutely. <laughs> Truly. More video. Saying no. Saying no. Okay, so these are great. These are great ones. Just throw them out. I just want you guys to get ideas from each other because you're all having a similar experience. Some of you have mastered certain things the others haven't figured out. Some of you haven't, you know, got your own strengths, right? So it's just throw them out there. Figure out what, what's important to you. What are you going to grow in and throw it out? What else? Give me a few more. Being transparent in relationships and build. Being transparent. I'm just going to stop there just because it's being transparent. What else? It's good. 
Read more. Love it. What else? Do you have any books you can listen to just being in the car these days? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's fun because being around Allison, she pushes so much stuff because she is such, such a learner, such a learning-based person. And it's like anything she wants to know, by tomorrow she's going to know. I mean, she just knows. She's going to find the book. She's going to find the YouTube. She's going to find it. She's going to get it. It's going to happen. She's very intentional. When she's committed to it, it's just done. Right, babe? Mm-hmm. Look at her. Uh-huh. She's killer on that stuff. I mean, I'm telling you, she just lights it up. You guys, every so often she'll pull an all-nighter. I'll get up the next day and it's like she's created a, a whole robot. Like this, like, it's, <laughs> my God, how'd that happen? It's like, she just, she just finds out. I didn't know how to do this. So I figured that out. And then I, that led me to this. And I had to figure that out. And I led over here to this. And here it is. It, it cleans the house for us. It's totally, <laughs> totally done. It's like, wow, it's crazy. She's building great systems for our company. So what else? Come on, get some good ones down. This is your time to really think about being purposeful with the changes you're making. Play big. Play big. People you surround yourself with. Yeah, change the people you're surrounding yourself with. Taking time for yourself, Cassie. That's good. What else? Confidence. Confidence? Yes. Certainty. No. K N O W. Say it again. Expecting respect. Okay. All right. So let's keep keep moving. You've got some things to work on. We're going to have some some more exercises around that stuff now. Here's one of my favorite lines from Jim Rohn. The first time I ever met him, I wrote this down on my 19 pages of notes in a stenographer's notebook. If you can imagine, if anybody even knows what a stenographer's notebook is. I had 19 pages of notes and in there he said, you can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. I'm gonna tell you my own corollary, my own version of that because I believe I believe slightly differently, but I do believe we have the capacity to grow. I want you to write it this way because it has something to do with what you just said about knowing, being confident. I'd like you to write it this way and have it say, you can have more than you've got when you remember who you are. I want you to know that you are way bigger than you even know and you may not remember that because you've been told or you've experienced. Sometimes you were told and then you've had an experience that verifies what somebody else told you and you believed it. But you know what's interesting? I was telling somebody the other day, my dad, I remember vividly being probably five or six, but I remember where I was standing. I remember the car he was driving. I remember him walking out of the garage to the car. We didn't have much of a relationship in my latter years. But I always think about this moment when he walked out and he comes to the car and I've got my baseball glove, my baseball glove, and a baseball and his baseball glove. And I said, hey, dad, let's play catch. And he said, I can't. I've got to go to work. So the question is, what did he do wrong? And was it really about what he did or what I, what I believed in the moment? Well, I don't even know what work is if I'm five years old, to be honest. We have no concept of work. So all I realize is that I wasn't important. All I know is that apparently I'm not enough. And I might make a decision at five years old that could still be affecting me at age 42, 44, 45, and I'm living in a mansion. I'm living in a freaking mansion in Laguna Hills, California, and I remember inviting him. We don't have much of a relationship. I hadn't seen him in probably three years and I wanted him to come and see because I wanted him to finally say something like, wow, I'm so impressed, great job. And I heard the car, we had the portico, the, the portico and the rounded driveway and the Bentley was sitting right in front to make sure that there was no <laughs> mistaken that he was gonna see it. It wasn't in the garage. It wasn't later we're gonna jump in a car and he'd just see it from the side and get in. No, it was in front. And I remember the car doors opening and closing and I remember coming to the door and the bell ringing and I'm like, wait, let him wait. Just let him wait. Just let this be dramatic. And I went and opened the big iron doors. 
and threw them back. <laughs> and he came in and hugged, and his wife was with him, and we all hugged. And he looked up and he says, wow, what do you need all this space for? <laughs> it's a true story. And I was still waiting for him to say, way to go, good job. But it was my own belief stuff. It's my own stuff. So what I want you to understand is that I finally had to learn, I can't wait any longer. I got to know myself. I just have to know. I just have to know. I just have to know that I'm enough. I just have to know that I'm that big. I don't have to become it. I am it. And then I can still grow, right? Does that make sense? Discipline. Boy, I've tossed that word around for years and years. And what I've come to understand is that discipline is only the beginning because if you don't turn it into a habit, you will have discipline fail you. Discipline will fail you more often than you'd like to think. Discipline is here today, gone tomorrow. Do you ever have a day when you just didn't feel disciplined? A day that you just could not perform? A day that you just didn't have it? Do you ever have a day like that? Anybody? Yes. Weeks or months. The rest of you liars, come on. <laughs> yeah, weeks or months, right? Yeah. yeah, totally. I'm not in it. I just can't, can't get myself back. Yeah, so what happens is discipline will let you down. But habit doesn't. So I meet my friend, I meet my friend um, in uh, Austin, bruiser of a dude. I think it was the very first seminar I ever did. Brian Johnson shows up and I look across the room and I see this guy and I remember looking at these arms. I said to him, I walked over and I said, what would it take, how much would it cost me to buy guns like that, you know? I was just, I was just like stunned. His, his biceps are bigger than my thighs and he's my height. He's like almost identical, but just like this. And I said, how much would it, and he, he laughed and he said, you know, he said, it's just, just time, man. And I said, like, how much time? And he said, an hour and a half a day, hour and three quarters a day. And I said, how do you do that? And his answer was, the, was a real aha for me because he said, it's just what I do. It's just what I do. It's my Identity. habit. It's my habit. For me, it's like, how in the world do you get time to go to the gym all that? How, how do you in the world get up in the morning and go through the cold weather to get to the, like I had all these thoughts in my head and for him, it's just what he does. So there was no question. It wasn't like he was wondering, should I go to the gym today? I'm kind of not feeling like it. I think I will. Well, maybe not. I'm not so sure. For him, it was like not a question. He got, got up and he goes and he does that every day because that's what he does. You realize the power of that? That's the power of habit. That's what habit is. So what are your success habits or what habits of success do you need to create? You know, what are those things that are important to you for 2020? Let's get three of them down real quickly. Three of them. Actually, I do not have this one on the list of things I was going to give you, but I'm just put it on the list. Uh, Brad or Allison, could you remind me of that? Take that picture or something. I just have to get that available to give them and the stuff I'm... So some of you are taking pictures. Just fill out the darn information. Get the information. Go. So what's the first habit? What's the first habit you want to work on for the new year? You had a few of them written down. You had some things you're going to do. But if you're just going to do them, are you going to make them a habit or are you just going to do them from time to time? You're going to make them a habit? Pick three of them that you wrote down earlier. You just had them like 10 minutes ago. What are those th three things that you really want to become habitual in the, mm, right, in the, in the repetition, you want it to just be who you are. What's habit number one? Write it down. How can you do it? What's, what's going to be the secret to you doing it? Write down A and B. And then C is awesome. Who's going to actually hold you accountable? For the mere moments that I had a job, four years with, with uh, Keller Williams, with Gary Keller, when I would form a habit, I would put it on my door, on the outside of my door. Here's the habit I'm working on. And here's the days that I've crossed off that I did it. 
and I put it on the outside of my door. People used to go, why do you put it on the outside of the door? Because I wanted everybody passing by. I wanted all my friends to ask me about it. I wanted everybody to hold me accountable. It was too noisy for me to quit, to let go, to not do, because everybody knew what I was into. So who's going to hold you accountable? Then start on habit number two. What are you going to do? What's the habit? What's the new behavior? What's the habit? How will you, you know, enact it? How will you reinforce it? How will you start the process? A and B, and then who's going to hold you accountable? And then three. Jamie, I was just thinking about you. No, seriously, I was just thinking about you. I was thinking, isn't it interesting, this same seminar we did in Vegas, but it's so different because we're actually working on it. Is this making sense, guys? Is this helping you? To really do the work, to get the stuff down, to really start processing. It's one thing to hear. It's a different thing to do it, to live it. All right, so you got your third one down? Got your third one down? It's all good. You good? I know. I'm having a moment. It's okay. Moments are good. Now, here's the next translation of it. It's called a growth plan, and this is one of the pieces that you'll get. You can, you can download this, so don't need a picture of it because you're never going to reproduce it. I want you to then go to each month of the year, and I want you to come up with four things, five things max, that you're going to do that are gonna help you to get the skills, the knowledge, the energy, the whatever. So it might, for example, say, like we're going to date with Destiny in, um, where we are, Fort Lauderdale in December. So if I wanna work on, you know, really the relationship and our life and all that stuff. What are we going to? Tony Robbins, date with Destiny. That's what we're doing in December. What else are we doing? I'm gonna read a book on a certain subject. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put those things in place. But if I've got certain goals and certain habits that I want to form, what might I do about that in relation to my personal growth? I might take three books on the subject of money if I'm trying to figure out why I'm always broke. I might work on three things related to relationship or some area of my business. But why? Because I'm, I'm missing ingredients and I want to read about it. I want to create that. I'm going to find a, a seminar to attend. I'm going to go to a program. I'm going to check out the site at uh, masteragentclub.com and find out what's available that I can grow from. I'm going to listen to the podcast, right? I'm going to do something that's going to put me in a place where on purpose, I am going to develop my growth around the areas that I want to grow. It's not just attend something. I, I went to something. Hey, great. Why? You're good at that already. It's like, what about something that you're not? What about something that you could do better? So here's the, here's the quick questions. What are the top five improvements, improvements you'd like to, to make? What would you like to read about them? What can you learn from YouTube about them? And what class can you take about that? I mean, what if you just broke it down that simply? There's your personal growth plan. Put it into uh, January through December 2020, and bam, you've got a plan. you got a plan for your business. We're going to have a plan for your business too, by the way. But you're also going to have a plan for your life. I told you about my time coaches, so I'm going to skip that part. But I will tell you this, the thing that, uh, that I, I'll, I'll tell you a couple stories about that because it pays $7,500 a month, by the way, for coaches. I paid very careful attention. It was, you know, there was a point with one of them, I was like, I had to almost calculate how much I was paying per word because he was only there for one day. And I'm like, like I don't want to miss a thing. Like I'm paying careful attention. I'm taking every note because I wanted to get it all. One thing I realized is this, that, that as time is all the same for everybody, it is the great unequalizer. It is the difference maker for everybody. So this is a, a key. The key use of our time is going to be a big deal. The hardest thing is creating success is not, not knowing what to do. And I said the double negative on purpose. It's not not knowing what to do. Leslie, you know what to do. You know what to do. You already know what to do, Carlos. You know what to do. It's not that. It's knowing what you're not going to do 
to give time to expand that. It's the hardest part is to figure out what not to spend time on. The hardest part is to, is to decipher and discern, to pray for discernment, this, to discern what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing. What is obvious, what everybody will tell me is what I should do. You're here learning what to do. I also want to make sure we tell you what not to do because you're going to have, you're going to, have to protect your time. You only have 24 hours, so the deciding about what not to do is just as critical, maybe more. So I want to help you with a little process. How many of you have ever had a to-do list? How many of you like making lists? Raise your hands if you like making lists. Okay, so making lists is, is awesome, right? And then what do you do? You go to the list. You make the list in, at, in the evening for the next day. You make the list in the morning for that, mor for that day. You make the list on Friday for Monday, or do you make the list on Sunday? Whatever your process is, right? You make a list. Or you get overwhelmed and you go, okay, I got to write some stuff down. So finally you write the stuff down. You make a list. What do you do on the list? What's the first thing you do on the list? Prioritize. The easy stuff. The, easy stuff. <laughs> the cotton candy. Yeah, absolutely. Right, look at this. I got that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I did all this stuff. Oh, I am so tired. I did all this stuff today. Ah. Did I do anything worthwhile? Did I do anything valuable? Did I really move the needle? Whoever said move the needle? <clears throat> Did I really, really break it down and do something that was important and move the ball down the field instead of laterally? I watched a pass the other day, Pre uh, uh, Prescott, what's his name? Dak Prescott passed the ball. And when, he, when the ball was missed, he was two yards in front of where the, the uh, scrimmage, yeah, right line of scrimmage. And I was like, why waste a 28-yard pass to the sideline to pick up two yards? It's dumb. I know every play is written up to be a touchdown, but that one ain't going to make it, okay? It's just not going to happen. You got to pass it that way, down the field. <laughs> so we got this thing called a to-do list. So what do we put on it? We put a bunch of stuff on it, right? We got these should-dos and could-dos. We should all over ourselves, and we put these things down there. <laughs> should, I said. We should all over ourselves. Should all over. And these are things we could do and we should do. But, but the bottom line is we got things we could do, but we have things we really should be doing. And by the way, there's one other group that's not on here, which is called must, must do's. With any luck at all, you don't have any must do's. Must do's are interesting. Must do's are usually like taxes on April 14th. <laughs> but what created a must do is usually a should do that you didn't do. Right. But if you had this list right here, this, all these shoulds and coulds, what would happen if you took only the ones that you really should do, they have to really get done, and you pulled them over to a much shorter list? What if you took the candy, cotton candy off the list, didn't even include it, and you took just the stuff that really needed to get done? What would happen if you only had five things to do today, and if you did those five things, like you would open up doors, you would have stuff flowing, like heaven would open, right? What if five things could make that happen? But 25 things on a list that you're not going to do anyway doesn't. And when you do the cotton candy stuff first, unfortunately, it doesn't really get you any, any result. So get clear about what's really important and eliminate the rest. That's really the secret. It's not about knowing what to do. It's a matter of knowing what you're not going to do. It's being clear about dis deciding. It's, somebody said, say no. It's saying no to yourself. We often think about saying no to others, but do we say no to ourselves? No, I'm not going to do that right now. I've got one of my people that's working out of her home, and she says the hardest thing, she's never been in business. She's been a, a stay-at-home mom for 28 years, and now she's in business. And she said, but i got to drop a load of laundry. And I said, yes, you do, but not during your business hours. Right? You've got to start deciphering what you will and won't do. What's your priority in the times that you're working Tell me what you're working. I'll set you up to win during that time. And the rest of the time is yours. Do whatever you want to do with it. You want to look at Facebook for three hours? Go for it. But not during your business hours, right? You make one post and stick around for 20 more minutes studying everybody else's post. That's called mistake. <laughs> Internal decisions and dialogue inside. Know these things. This one you should take a picture and, and post this somewhere. This is one I want you to get loud and clear. I am lovable. I am important. I am enough. Like, I'd love for you to affirm that often. I'm worthy. I'm lovable. I'm important. The time of my life is important. By the way, the way I use my time is critical. 
Am I using my time effectively right now? Yes or yes? Yes. yes. Are you always? Answer, no or no? No. <laughs> Did you get that? Mm-hmm. What gets in the way of your effective and productive life for sure is time wrecks. So I'm going to give you just a few of them real quickly and then we're going to get to work on, on scheduling because this is where it all starts to big, change big. Time wrecks. Multitasking, one of the big ones. Multitasking. People say, no, I'm excellent at multitasking. That's BS. That's a story you're telling yourself. It might be a useful story, but really it's probably not because it's taking you down a path. I'm going to give you a quick exercise. I want you to do this on a clean sheet of paper, one that won't like destroy your journal or your best book. Maybe you can buy a piece of paper from your neighbor out of their, uh, their uh, three ring binder or whatever it is. Like for a, pay him a buck for it. Give him a buck. I mean, what the heck? Take a sheet out real quickly. We're going to do this exercise. You're going to have fun with this. Oh my gosh, you guys. Watch this. I'm going to show you a thing called single tasking and multitasking. Okay, I'm getting my my clock out because we're going to do some serious work here. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is I'm going to ask you to write something. Don't do it yet. I'm going to ask you to write something. When I ask you to write it, I'm going to say go, and you're going to do it as fast as you can, and I'm going to clock it, and I want somebody who's the first person to get it done to say done. Okay? So you ready? I want you to write the numbers one through 10 as fast as you can. Okay. Okay, I need a timekeeper, please. I need a timekeeper. Who'll keep my time? Who'll keep my time? Somebody write this down. Some, somebody can add this up. Anybody, anybody. Preston's got it. 3.37 seconds, Preston. 3.37 seconds. Some of you were probably a little behind on that, but you couldn't have been that far behind, right? It's just one to 10. Not confusing at all. Now, I'm going to have you do this one on paper, okay? As fast as you can, I want you to write the letters A through J. Preston? Yeah. Uh, 3.95 seconds. Okay. Now, for this next part, you're going to need a neighbor. You're going to need a partner. And I see you got two and you got two, but you got nobody, Carlos. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to find somebody. Sucks to not have somebody, Carlos. <laughs> All right, you need a partner. So pick your partner, one next to you. Say hi. If you don't know them, get to know them. Two, four, six, eight. Oh, yeah, you guys, huh? Perfect. Carlos, so you got somebody, huh? Okay. So I need you to be sitting next to them, though. So maybe you could come around to up here. Sit next to them. Okay, you guys got your partner? Everybody? Anybody partner, partnerless? Okay, here we go. So here, let me, let me show you. Amy, can you come up here for a quick sec? So we're sitting next to each other. Get this? So we're sitting next to each other. So we're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to look and we're going to catch each other's gaze. We're going to really, I, I'm not like a loving, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, you're going to catch each other's eyes, okay. acknowledge each other, look away, look back, look away. You're going to do this 10 times, okay? Oh. That's all I want you to do, just that. That's simple, okay? Thank gonna, you very much. Oh, yes. You did great. You did great at the looks. It was fantastic. <laughs> you should do that for a profession. It's great stuff. All right, you ready? Wait, 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 wait. No, we didn't start yet. I'm, she was on stage. We were talking. All right, you ready? Yes. Set, go. Don't break your neck. Don't break your neck. Don't hurt yourself. Really connect deeply. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we got seven, 7.35 seconds. So what you just witnessed was focusing on one thing at a time and getting that thing done. And if it was counting one to 10, it was pretty simple, right? It was like, I was on fire. I got one. I got two, ah, three, right? I'm just going to go right through the list. I got to 10. Took me, I forget what it was, three point seconds, something, right? Okay. So we single task. Now I'm going to get you, a, a, give you an experience of multitasking, right? This is going to be a lot of fun. So what I want you to do, no cheating, get to a, flip the sheet over. So you're not copying from yourself. 
flip to the other side. And what I want you to do is I'm going to ask you to write the first number down. Don't start doing any numbers without looking, like putting the numbers down, okay? <laughs> I'm going to ask you to put the first number down. I'm going to ask you to put the first letter down, A. So I'd say number one, A. And then I'm going to look over and catch the gaze of the person next to me. But i got to catch the gaze. I can't, like if, I'm not looking in their ear and turning back, okay? I'm looking when they catch my gaze and I'm looking away. So it's going to be first number, first letter, gaze. Second number, second letter, gaze. Got it? You ready for this? Okay, hold on now. You're going to start with the number, okay? Ready, set, go. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> Are you connecting? Are you really connecting? Make sure you connect. Looking in their ear doesn't help. Done, right? Okay, who isn't done yet? Who's not done yet? Who broke down and has no plans to ever finish, right? It's not going to, yeah. <clears throat> so, Preston, mark down 26.9 seconds. Okay, so let's, let's challenge this whole thing now. So what was the total of the three numbers the first time we did it in single tasking? Just give us a, a, a pretty close proximity to... 14.6 seconds. 14.6 seconds. Okay. And what did we say? I'm, I'm still running here. Sorry. What was my... 26.9. Okay. So that's like twice as much, right? About twice as much. How many noticed that you were more stressed in the second experience than in the first experience? How many noticed greater stress? How many, did anybody make any mistakes on like numbers or letters? Yes. Like one A, B, C, uh, you know, uh, 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 A, B, C, D, that's it. That's. How many made mistakes between one and 10? I mean, it's like, so we're under stress. We make mistakes on simple things and all that's because we did what? Multitask. I'm just suggesting to you that multitasking uh, is not the way. So turn to your neighbor, same neighbor, this friend that you've now made, and turn to them and say, multitasking sucks. Multitasking sucks. <laughs> All right, so your lesson is done. <laughs> You're good. Multitasking sucks. <clears throat> Here's my favorite quote of all times. Multitasking is merely the opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. <laughs> By far. Okay, thanks. I think we're right on, actually. Shocking as it is, but we I think we're right on. So here's what we're, we're talking about. Number one is multitasking. Number two is, oh, by the way, I thought we had a video in there. Somehow it's not there. Ah, okay, I'm going to show you this video first. So can we turn that off? <coughs> If you asked me the last time I did a thing and just did it and wasn't also trying to do something else, I wouldn't be able to tell you. What? Hmm, nope. Thought I had it. <laughs> to be fully present on the internet at any given moment is a very rare thing. You're trying to write a paper and so you've got that open in Google Docs and then you're like, well, maybe I should read a little bit more about the thing I'm writing about. And then there's a link in there. You're like, this is a little tangential, but maybe it's interesting that I should know about meerkats. Ooh, the meerkats lay eggs. I didn't know that. Is that correct? And then there's videos of not just meerkats, but three-toed sloths. Oh my gosh, these things are actually like, traded in inhumane ways, I should probably get involved with some sort of activism there. So you're like joining the Facebook page, telling your friends like, this isn't right what we're doing to the sloths. And then you're like, who like liked my sweet pics that I posted this morning on Facebook? Wow, it's my ex-girlfriend. Is she still into me? Maybe I'll spend 30 minutes composing a message that I never send. Or if I did send, that I 
then regret and spend the next hour composing a message retracting that. And then I'm like, whoa, I've gotten a lot done in my paper. Not. <laughs> the way that technology is and the way that I interact with it has started to affect me in real life. Am I developing some sort of inability to focus because I never focus on things. I was like, well, maybe this is life mimicking internet, you know? So I started to do this thing, Tablets Thursday. It's where you don't really use the internet in a traditional way. You just sort of open a tab and, and, and use it. It's called single tasking, that's what I call it. So it's basically, if you were to do, um, it's like, instead of, like, like you just do one thing. It's like work, but on only one thing. This way you have to really make a value judgment and say, do I want to finish what I'm doing or do I want to stop and do something else? You can click away if it's not interesting, but you close it. It's done and it's behind you and it's not part of your life. It's like breaking up and you can talk again, but you can't still be seeing that person because you moved on to a new thing. You can't still be with that tab. You know, that tab is behind you. How, he's a doctor. No. He's a doctor. It's a real story. Yeah, a real story. Yeah, so how many uh, could see yourself in any of that? Allison will tell you I'm the worst with tabs. I got tabs out the ears. Tabless Thursdays. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to try it for a day, see how it works. Just one day with just one tab Thursday. And I love, but I love, but he, the points, right? You have to make a value judgment. You have to make a decision. I'm working on that one thing. If I'm going to turn to something else, I'm not going to work on that anymore. I'm going to be working on something else. So if you were in uh, high school, some of you remember that uh, last week, and some of you remember like lifetimes ago, and, it, and you remember that when you were in biology class and the bell would ring and you were studying biology, and it was, I don't know, 50 minutes, it seems like classes were 50 minutes. And so the bell rings and then you get up and then you have time, about five minutes, to get cross campus to another building where you're going to study something else. And then it was algebra or it was whatever, right? Trigonometry, that was my favorite. And so, right, then you, you make the journey, five minutes, then you get over here, the bell rings, and for that 50 minutes, you're in what? You're in trig. You're doing that. And then the bell rings and you get up and you break the thought and now you go do something else. If we'd operate like that, we'd be great. We don't. We're, we're in one class studying the books from the other class. We've got things going off in our phones. I'm going to show you some of the stuff, but I mean, literally, we are absolutely, I talked about throwing the, making sure the ball you know, is going down the field. It's really true. Whatever you focus on expands. And so what we've got to do is focus on, on the thing that really matters to us, not on 10 things that we're not supposed to be doing. Write these numbers down very quickly. Write these numbers down. They're fascinating to me. 4,000, 28% and 60. This is a new, a new study that I found. So 4,000, what is that number? 4,000 is the number of conscious thoughts we have every single day. So listen, you, you're worried about distractions. We're going to talk about te technology distractions and Facebook distractions, all kinds of distractions. I don't even need those distractions. I've got plenty of squirrels in my own brain, <laughs> right? I mean, I've got stuff constantly coming at me that I'm going, squirrel, 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 <laughs> right? It's happening all the time. So 4,000 is the number of conscious thoughts, by the way, that does not deal with the 10,000 or more subconscious, unconscious thoughts that we have, which by the way, there's a real big part there, and that is those, those 10,000 or more are very often repetitive, extremely repetitive, and they're almost always negative. That's the unconscious. So we have 4,000 conscious thoughts, 10,000 or more unconscious thoughts that are usually demeaning you. 28% is the amount of lost time each and every day based on 
task switching. So this thing that we were doing with the demonstration where you're having to you know, look up, make connection, but break your thought process. What letter was I on? What number was I on? That process right there of losing time, 28%, which means in a day, we're losing about two plus hours. In a week, you're losing a day. In a month, you're losing almost a whole week. In a month, you're losing a week. So what's that cost you in money? If you're making $100,000 a year and you lose a week at $50 an hour, you just lost what? A lot of money right? 2,000 bucks or more. It's expensive. And by the way, 60 is the number of uh, distractions in the life of an independent contractor um, in, in the likes of real estate. It wasn't about realtors only, but it was about people that are independent contractors that have either a real estate office and office or are working out of their homes. And a lot of those distractions are coming through technology but if you're in a traditional office, you've got people walking by. Hey, do you just got a second? I have, I, listen, I don't, want to, I don't want to interrupt you. I just want to ask you a quick question. Well, you've already interrupted me, and it's not quick. You know, it's like... 60 per day? Yeah. What's that? Was it 60 per day? 60 per, per work day. 60 during the work day. 60 during the work day. How crazy is that? <coughs> so conscious thoughts a day, lost time, two hours a day, almost a full week, number of distractions in an agent's business day. I, I said agents, it was actually independent contractors. Different from workers, by the way. I think workers in a, in a traditional office run about 43 to 45. And in our world, it's more like 60. And of course, depending upon your world, kids, not kids. I mean, it could be lots more than that, but it's going to be in that range. Okay, I put this slide in to remind you that we are, um, we launched yesterday, and I just wanted to take a, a, a brain second here to tell you that we would love for you to get in there and Brad, they can actually go there and just sign up online and yeah, make so that happen, right? Yeah, the, um, there's a pop-up that shows up right on the screen. I saw it when I looked this morning. I know, I loved it. They just hit the join now button. It's just your name, password, and uh, email address and you're in. They get discounts on stuff and they're gonna be in our, in our uh, Master Agent Club as it grows. And then I also want you to go to, and I don't think I have this up here, Oh, that is that. Actually, that's, a, that's the Facebook community. So on the Facebook community, if you're not in there, I know some of you are, Amy, you're in. I know there's quite a few of you that are. If you're not, go to facebook.com and then go to Master Agent Club and go in there and ask for membership. Just ask to join. Uh, Brad or Allison or I will see it. We'll let you in. But there's three questions that you should answer. And the three questions, if you'll just put on any one of the questions that you were here today, just say uh, in Portland or, you know, Master Agent Club, whatever. Just something that lets us know you're here. So not different from people that are coming from the outside. And what we'll do is we'll just put you in there. And that's where you're actually going to get all the handouts that I'm going to give you. And I'm going to actually prepare one link to a Google Drive. Can we do that, babe? I'm, I'm saying this. I think that's the safest thing to do, right? Just put one link. It'll go to a Google Drive where you'll have like seven different documents that I want to give you. And that includes the morning questions, the evening questions, and about four things we're just about to do right now that you're going to want, okay? So just go there in Facebook and do it while you're thinking about it. Don't do it like tonight because you may forget. <clears throat> now, we're going to now develop your one-page business plan. Who would love to have a great business plan for 2020 before you leave here today? Okay, I would love for that to happen too, but I'm not sure you're going to get it done, but I can at least get you started. And if I get you started, how many will finish it by this weekend? How many will finish your business plan for next year by Sunday? Okay, so let's go to work. We call it the TIP. It stands for Target Interim Goals and Projects. It's a one-page document. I remember bringing a, a, a business plan for a very complex business. The way I saw it, a very complex business to a guy one time and I showed him the business plan and he handed it back to me. And the reason he handed it back to me without even opening it, looking at it, was because I had a staple in it. And it was meant it was two pages. And he said, if it's two pages, it's too long, too complex, you'll never do it. How many business plans did I see when I was training people in the general business world that were business plans of 12, 15, 25, 50 pages? Complexity running rampant. There's no way to pull that off. 
So what you need is a one page simplistic plan that gives you everything you need to see in one page that you can post very near everything you do in, in your world, near the computer, near your desk, near there, and your business plan's always in front of you and you're focused on very few things, but the things that really move the needle, move the ball down the field faster than anything else. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So this thing here, this, this, this 2020 TIP, it's gonna call for your, your one big goal. So I'm gonna to suggest to you, because it needs to be measurable, that while it would be great to say, I wanna be happier, I wanna be you know, whatever, I want more lifestyle, I want more time off, it would be great if you could have one goal and if it was financially related, it's easier to track. It could be something like days off. By the way, my time coach, I told you I had two. I had David Allen, I had my other coach. I want you to hear this before we get into this because this will expand your thinking. So Dr. Fred Gross, this was my favorite. He was just, an, I, I talk about him like he's dead. He's still around, but I haven't talked to him in probably 10 years. Fred was the most amazing man, touched my heart in so many ways. The first time I ever met him, uh, I knew we were lifelong friends and, and like I felt like I'd known him forever. But the thing that happened when I hired him is the very first meeting we had, he said, what do you want? And now Greg Herter and I were both in front of him and we're, you know, kind of talking for ourselves, but kind of looking at each other like, you know, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And Fred's like, what do you want? And then he said, what do you want, right? What do you want? I don't care what anybody else wants for you. I don't care what you think they want you to want. What do you want? And I want you to hear that loud and clear because it was a great lesson for me. How often are we making it, what, about, what do we want based on what everybody else wants us to want? I showed up in this big mansion of a house that I was telling you about, and the reality is one day I woke up and I, saw, I thought, I wonder why I have this. I don't remember wanting this myself. I think I wanted it because other people thought this was what success looked like, and I wanted to be what people thought was successful. So is it possible we could want for other people, and it has nothing to do with us? And the answer is absolutely. So he said, what do you want? And I said, I want to make enough money to, to take more time away. And he said, what would keep you from taking time away now? And I said, I don't know. I guess it feels like money. He said, I know what you're making. It's not money. It's just time. You just need to take time. So I listened to him for a second and he said, I want you to do this. He said, between now and the next time we're together, I want you to do this exercise. He said, I want you to take your calendar and take all of the time off that you want next year off the calendar. Just put big red X's through it, and paper calendar in those days, paper calendar. And he said, just put red X's through those days. Like if there's a four day weekend, if there's a three day weekend, if there's a week of vacation, there's two weeks of vacation, whatever it is, I want you to go through and take out all the time that's your time. He said, I want you to do that first. And when I get back together with you next week or next month, I'll tell you what we're gonna do with that. So it didn't seem very realistic, but it wasn't all that scary either because it was really just going through and kind of fantasizing like, wouldn't it be cool if, and, and you, know, what, you know, in fact, I remember Greg and I were having this conversation in front of him and he said, well, what do you want? And I said, well, for one thing, I want Fridays off. Like I'm tired of working five days. I want four day weeks. And he said, well, why don't you take them now? And I said, well, we were going to, we talked about it. We were gonna do that. But I said, I didn't take it off because he didn't take it off. And he said, I didn't take them off because you didn't take them off. <laughs> and I'm like, are we two like 40 something mature idiots? You didn't take it off. So I didn't take it off. It's like, oh, are you kidding me? Anyway, we both decided to take four day, uh, three-day weekends, right? Four-day weeks. So that was first thing. And then there was the three-day weekend every, every month. And then I took off. I said I wanted five weeks of vacation. So I put all that on the calendar. I ran all that through my schedule. And I took all that time off of the calendar, not off, in the out, <laughs> right, off the calendar. And a month later, we got back together again. I said, this was really a fun exercise. It kind of let me think about how life could be different than how it is right now because we were traveling so much. And of course, we started having conversations about what would allow you to take that much time. So some of the conversation we had today, leverage, who could you leverage through? Rhonda, mm -hmm. some of our trainers, right? Some of our other people. We could leverage through other folks. And for the first time, Greg and I weren't the only ones bringing the money back to the little, the, to the nest where all the baby birds were going, feed me, feed me, feed me. We had all kinds of people who were starting to play with us, right? We, so we started getting that. But he said, okay, by the next time, I want you to, to go and I want you to put the vacations and what you're gonna do on those weekends, those weeks off, I want you to put them on the calendar exactly where you're going. Like, I want you to plan the trips. And I was like, well, that, 
now we're starting to talk some reality and this scares the heck out of me because how can I possibly really take off five weeks of vacation? And he said, do you own the business? I said, yeah. He said, would anybody object? I said, just him. Greg said, no, I'm going to take the same off. So it was like, no, I'm not going to fight you. Let's do it. And then I started thinking, how do I pay for all that? Right? That, so all the, all the reality stuff, right? The little chatter. So here we go and we do this whole exercise. And one month later, we get back together again. And he's really excited. I'm super excited because I've got like, I'm just going to South America for 17 days, fly fishing. I'm a big fly fisherman. I was going to Kamchatka the same year, fly fishing, catching big trout. I mean, I was like, I was doing all this cool stuff and it was all on the calendar and it felt really good. But there was also this element of like, how do I pay for it? How do I do this? Is it real? Could I possibly? And what happened is when we got back together the next time, he said, between now and the next time we're together, we had you know, our day of coaching. He said, between now and the next time we're together, I want you to buy all the tickets. Yeah, somebody just said shit. And yeah, exactly what I, exactly what I said. I was like, it might even been more colorful, but it was in that realm of no freaking way. You know, it's not going to happen. I, I don't know how to do that. And literally in one month, I did all those trips, booked all that stuff. And he said, let me teach you a lesson that you're going to have to remember for the rest of your life. And it, he called it the vacation miracle. He said, did you ever notice that when you're getting ready to go on a trip, you're getting ready to go on vacation, how effective and focused and on point you are that week? Like even being gone today for you to come over from Bend, right? Like you're out for the day. So what did you have to get done yesterday? I got to get all this stuff done. It's got to get done by last night. Why? Because tomorrow I'm off, right? Think about a two-week vacation or a week vacation, and I'm leaving on Friday for the plane. What do I get done? This week, everything. Somebody says, hey, let's have coffee. You know what? I love you. I'd love to, and I can't this week. I've got a, a trip coming up, and I've got to get this stuff done. So how focused do you stay in that week? How focused? Laser focused, right? Absolutely on point. And then the... The, you know, all the things, right? All the things that move the ball forward. It's like, I got to get this stuff done, this stuff done. This transaction's got to be put in place. I got to the price reductions. I got to get stuff done. And all of this stuff has to happen before I leave. And he said, I want you to live in that mode for every day of your life, whether you're going on vacation or not. But he said, the fact is, you can take any time off that you want because all you do then is compress time. I was 19 years old. Uh, no, sorry, I was 21 years old working for Jim Rohn. I made $100,000 for the first time in my life. Always had the idea, six figures. Everybody wants to make six figures. Ironically, in 2019, if you ask people, what do you want to make? They go, six figures. I'm like, really? I was going to do that back in 86 or 83 or something. Anyway, I make 100 grand. And, I, and Jim knows it. And he says, great job, Donald. He called me Donald. Great job, Donald. He said, now, you've learned how to make $100,000. Listen to this. He said, now do it in half the time. You already know the process. You know how to make $100,000. You've learned that. Do it in half the time. What was he teaching me? Time compression. It's not time. It's the process. And how fast can you do the process? Well, if you stay on point, you stay on track, you do the things that are necessary, how fast can you do it? And the answer is faster. And by the way, are there people that make more than $100,000 in six months? Yes. Yes. So are there models for figuring out how to do that in a month? Yeah. Are there people that make $1.2 million in a year that make $100,000 a month? Yes. Are there people that make $5 million a year that make $100,000 a week? Yes. Is that possible? Yes. So what's the difference? What do you think they work on versus what we're working on? They say laser focus on just the essential things that move lots of things forward. They push buttons that make a lot of things go. Yes? Mm -hmm. Do you think that would change your business if you thought that way every single day of your life? How many think it would? Yes. How many are excited to try? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so your first assignment when you go home tonight, between now and, and Sunday, I want you to put together your calendar and take all the... So here's your first step. We'll, we'll go through this. Actually, I'm going to give you a whole calendar. But we'll do it then. We'll do it then. So again, back to your TIP. So the first thing is, what are the things that make up the big goal? So the big goal is going to make some big dollar figure, whatever that dollar figure is. Or perhaps it's time off. I want uh, 62 days off besides weekends. Or it's, uh, I want to um, have a... Um, 
what? I want to have, um, what else would be huge like that in lifestyle or in money? Give me, give me one. Give me a big one. Big ticket item? Big ticket item? Like buy a house? Yeah, buy a house. That would be fine. So you'd have some way of knowing that you did it. Right? You can accomplish it. So it's a, it's a figure. It can be figured as yes or no, won or lost, right? You did it or you didn't do it. Then we're going to come down to three things. If you're doing it in dollar figures and you're doing it for your business, one-page business plan, by the way, you could use the same process, the TIP, for planning a wedding. You could use the TIP process for studying for your school. You could do the TIP process for anything because it's just a planning tool. But what I want you to hear now is business tool. And the business tool says, if I were to put this together, there's three areas, maybe four at the most, Right now you see them as interim goal one, interim goal two, and interim goal three. T is the target. I is the interim goals. At least three, no more than four. The, the three for most of you that are in the business at a reasonable level and are making good money and you're solid in your business, probably going to have three. Number one is increased sales. Number two is going to be something related to service. And number three is going to be something related to operational, your, your systems and structures. Number one, number two, and number three. Underneath each one of those, you're going to get the five things that would move that needle forward in that arena. So if I wanted to increase sales, what are the five things that would increase sales more than anything else I could do? If it's service, what are the five things I could do that would absolutely change the service perception I have and get me more referrals, get me more reviews, positive reviews, all that? What would be the five things? Right? And the five things for operational, what would be the five things that could happen? Now, for some of you, I might suggest you break up the first one, sales, and increased sales would be something like uh, increased sales by uh, $150,000 or uh, increased income by $150,000 or increased income by $300,000, whatever it is. That you would break that down and you would say, so how would I do that? By when, by the way? So we're going to say one year, we're going to say 2020. And then by whom and by when will be all the little projects that are at the bottom of that, the five things. So if it says increase sales by $200,000, great. So what are the five things I can do? I'd like you to break out sales and marketing as separate. That's where you might get four things. Sales is one, marketing is two, service is three, operations is four. And if you're a one person operation right now, you might be able to leave the operational system off this time around, but by 2021, I'd like to set you up so that you've got people in your life and people and systems and structures. And so by 21, you'd want to have that operational piece. But I would say no less than three areas, no more than four, sales, marketing, service, and operations. Then the, the four, five, or six things at most under each one of those, how do I drive marketing? How do I drive sales? How do I drive whatever it is that I'm driving, right? What is that area? So that's what you're going to do. How do you do that? You're going to take a blank sheet of paper. Here's your process between now and Sunday night. I want you to take a blank sheet of paper and I want you to take the first one. Let's say it's increased sales by a certain number. Then I want you to write down all the things you could possibly do to increase sales by that amount. I could, um, I could cold call. I could call an expireds. I could call Fizbo's. I could... Like, just list them off. If you come up with 20 or 30 things, I want them all. Then marketing. What are all the things I could do to, to, uh, to create a flow of 20 come list me's next year? I'm making this up. Skyrite over Portland, you know, with a Skyrider, you know, whatever it is, right? Billboard over the city streets, uh, a, a, a Facebook site, a, you know, like, what is it? List everything, 20, 30 things. From the 20 or 30 things, I want you to come to the five, four, five, six at most that will move the needle faster and better. But start with this many, whittle it down to this many. Okay, you got it? Everybody get this? How many are excited about the process? How many are excited about having it finished? <laughs> it's work, but you're going to love it. 
All right, so that's your TIP. You're gonna transfer all the strategies that have gotta be accomplished from that whole thing into your monthly goals. By the way, you're gonna do the complete, complete brain dump, as we call it. The, the brain dump exercise is the one where you take a sheet of paper and just write down everything that comes to mind. You're gonna plan your, your uh, you're gonna apply Pareto's principle, by the way. Who knows what Pareto principle is? 80-20. 80 20. So what does that mean in terms of, of selecting the right one? So when you've got a list of things to do, how do you know by the Pareto principle which is gonna be the best one? So you're, you're filtering through which is gonna move the needle better, which is the one that's gonna get me the most mileage. This is a good idea, but I think it's too labor intensive. This would be better. This has got more leverage. Yes? You follow me, everybody? Yep. So that's how you use the Pareto principle. Then you're gonna identify, the, again, the five strategies or the five uh, interim goals, and you're gonna then, under each of those, those um, three areas called interim goals. You're gonna list off the five uh, projects and you're gonna ask the, the, constantly asking the focusing question. Okay, now here's what I want you to hear. If you're a big business or if you're planning on building something big, watch this, because this is really cool. If you turn that thing sideways, and by the way, we're gonna give this to you. It's in the, in the packet we're gonna give you. If you turn it sideways and you got those three things, there's your first org chart. Org chart. So now I've got three priorities, and what does that mean? Well, I might have three people, but I also might have just two people, or me and somebody, and we're gonna divide those things up. Here are the big three things. I'm gonna take charge of sales. She's gonna take charge of, uh, of or he's gonna take charge of whatever, related to service, related to something, and we're gonna have the by whom, by when, what do we need to do to get this stuff done? All of it's gonna get done on this sheet of paper, but once I've done it, I've got, I turn it sideways, I've got the beginnings of my org chart. Because in my world, what happens a lot is if you're gonna do marketing, for example, you're gonna get the plate spinning, you're gonna get that project done, and you're gonna go, here, you take that one and keep it spinning. I'm gonna go start another one, right? So then we start dishing out projects and going, here, and here's somebody that I can hire as a graphic person, you got that project. Here's my, my social media person, boom, you got that project. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? yes? So here's what it really looks like in the end, right? Your target, your, in, uh, your interim goals, and then your projects. Here's your next piece. You're gonna put it all into this, into this form we call the action goal sheet. So the action goal template's absolutely just gonna be there to say, how do I take the year projects, all those projects that gotta get done, what has to get done this month? How do we go from, remember the, the one chart that I showed you, the one diagram, it was someday, five years, three years, one year, and then we start stepping down, six months, three months, one month, right? That's what this is. That's taking the one year and saying, okay, great. If 2020 is gonna start off, what do you need to accomplish of all the things you need to do in 2020? What has to happen in January? All we're gonna do is focus on what goes into January, and it's gonna be the, see the monthly? You got the annual, you got the monthly, you got the, uh, oh, sorry, the quarterly, you got the monthly, and you got the weekly. But what, watch what happens down here. Then you put, bring things down to the week one, week two, week three, week four. And every week you've got just the list of things that need to get done this week that move the needle forward. So we're going to stop playing with all the things we could do. And we're going to start working with all the things we should do. It's going to be a much shorter list. They're going to go into this thing. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. Now... This is the one. How are we doing? What's, what time is it? Okay. Okay. So I want to get through this next piece and then we're going to wrap. Okay. So building your successful schedule. You're going to love me after this. Oh. You love me already. Thank you. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, who knew? So we're going to be done in about seven minutes. So here's the deal. If you build a schedule that runs your business the way it should be run, all you have to do is follow the schedule. The challenge is for most of us, we're constantly thinking about the strategies of what we're supposed to do. What should I do today? Like you're, you're overthinking it. What if it was so simple, you could just put it on a calendar and follow the calendar? How many could actually see yourself doing that? Okay, so let's do it. So we're talking about working in your business, working on your business, working in your business is when you're doing the daily doings, as we said earlier, working on is when you're doing the, the strat strategic work. Okay, that's great, the 30,000 foot view. But here's what happens in the 12 week sprint. And this is what, 
This is what all this has been to, to, to design. This is what it's all come down to, okay? We wanna get it down to where we're gonna sprint for 12 weeks, absolutely sprint for 12 weeks and create in 12 weeks. My friend Shannon just had a 12 week. So the first quarter of this year, 19, last year she did $18.4 million for the whole year. First, uh, first quarter of this year, she did 18 units total. Off track. I moved her to a 12 week sprint. The next quarter, she did 47 listings and 23 sales. She did over $11 million in one quarter. She's at this point, we, we set the goal this year for 35 million, last year uh, 18.6, so it was almost a doubling. She's already got 132 transactions. She's already at 132, uh, 134 with pendings and she's still got six weeks left. And what's very exciting about this is we pushed it one more step and I said, well, listen, since you're giving bonuses to your people, why don't you push them one more step? If you hit 40 million and you do 145 transactions, they all get $1,000 cash on the trip you're all ta already taking them to in Mexico. So if she does an extra $5 million in that extra push, right, under the 12-week schedule, she gives them an extra 1,000. She makes an extra 120,000. She gives an extra 5,000 away. How many think that's a smart bet? They're liable to hit it. They're coming close. So the first thing you do, you take off. Do this real quickly on your, on your notes, okay? We got major ground to hit, but I want to do this fast. So I want you to first take off all the dates that you have no control over. You committed to being at a wedding. You go to the state convention. You're going to your company convention. So take those dates off. Let's get that stuff off the calendar. That has nothing to do with success. That has to do with just commitments you've made. It's big stuff, you can't move it. If your birthday falls in the convention, they're not changing the convention. Too bad, so sad, right? So now I want you to get your, to your stuff. So I want you to talk about the, the days off that you want, the days, the, the early days you want off. I want you to really dictate because here's what I know. Starting today for this last six weeks of this year, I want you to be very purposeful with what time you're taking off and what time you're working. Specifically during the holidays, I wanna give you a warning shot over the bow of your ship right now because this holiday season will suck you into all kinds of time off. So I want you to decide, when am I gonna do all the things that we do during the holidays? Get the tree, do the shopping, do the whatever. Kids party at school, party with the, for the neighbors. Whatever you're doing, put it on the calendar, and then whatever you're not doing that, you're working. So I want you to get very purposeful with time off and time in. Does that make sense? This is really important stuff to do right now during this holiday because in about two weeks, you're going to get sucked into the, the beginning of the holiday season and it's earnest. I already have people that are losing themselves. Uh, Three-day vacations, four-day vacations, follow my schedule that I gave you earlier. Here's what it looks like. So you're going to take a schedule. This, you probably want to take a quick picture. You're going to time block all the unchangeable industry stuff and major family events that have already been called out family reunions with your cousins. I mean, whatever it is, all the unchangeable stuff comes off first. Then your time off, your personal and family time off. That's your first big move. Second is all your high productive, uh, productivity activities, all of your work that's the biggest stuff that you've got to get done. And then finally is your planning time. And this is one that almost nobody puts into their schedule, planning time. So every day, uh, I want you to spend 15 to 30 minutes. Every uh, week, I want you to spend between one hour and, you know, two hours is probably not necessary, probably an hour. Uh, every month, it would probably be in the range of half a day and every year, a full day planning. So this will, you take the picture uh, or you missed. Argue for your limitations and they're yours. I can't take that much time off. There's no possible way I could take that time off. I didn't think so either. By the way, I didn't tell you the end of the story. The end of the story was I ended up that year with 152 days off. 152 days off. Now remember, there's some weekends in there, right? That's a lot. But I took 50 some days of my own time off, traveled the world, did some incredible stuff. Our company tripled in volume. My personal income doubled. That was in one year. Rhonda started doing seminars for us. I started having more time off. Life changed completely. It all changed with one thing, and that was changing the calendar. 
Now, with that in mind, your weekly plans. Remember, you're, you're, you're not working with a to-do list anymore. You're doing the stuff that really matters through your success list. So here, here is your social, here's your, your perfect stuff, the stuff that's really going to make a difference. Everything beyond that shouldn't be on your calendar at all, except personal, right? Personal's first. There's your perfect day, perfect week. By the way, what's your first business act of the day? Anybody, call it out quick. What's your first business day of the, of the first, first business act of the day? Emails. Text messages. Let me tell you, there's no such thing as an emergency email. It's never happened. It never will. <laughs> and if you go to text and they start pulling you and you'd planned out your entire day, you just are off your schedule and on theirs. So within 10 minutes of waking up, you are off your schedule and on theirs. You've blown your, your plan. I'm going to have a hard time going back too often because we got to get out of here. So don't mistake movement for achievement. All right, so I want to give you one last thing, and I'm just going to give you this, week, this weekly plan here. Do a time log every single day for, for two or three days that are traditionally what you would call like standard days. Meaning, if it's a weird day like today, this would be a weird day to take a time log because who cares? You're doing weird stuff. This is not normal. But any normal day, I want you to do a time log, three of them. Okay, that's going to tell you what you're doing and what's, where your squirrels are. I want you to build a schedule, and this is the schedule, and this too will be in the packet, but this is a, an imaginary make-believe schedule. This is my schedule for you. It is packed with everything that you need to be putting in there, but if you decide you have a different priority, that's different. Go ahead and put it in there, but make sure that you have a schedule. The beauty of this is all you've got to do is literally every day, there's your morning ritual time, there's your prospecting, there's your content creation time, there's your flux time, by the way, I built in flux time every single day. So if something changes in the schedule, you've got flux time to move it into. But if you look at this schedule, this will give you a schedule that will create the results that you want. All in favor, say aye. 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 Time blocking isn't hard. Keeping your time blocks is, is freaking hard. It's really hard. So how many feel better about that? I'm going to show you one last little diagram here. And it looks like, oh, by the way, this is going to be in the packet. This is going to be your time log. So every 15 minutes, I want you to log what you've done in the last 15 minutes. I want you just to give a quick cursory uh, description. A Facebook post, talk to a client, you know, whatever. Just, just quick, boom, 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 okay? I want to show you this last thing. This is what we've just done today. We took your sometime in the future, GSTT now, goal setting to the now. We took your someday future. We just put it into a 2020 TIP, one page business plan. You do your mind dumps. You do all of that stuff. You come right over here. You drop it into the monthly, what happens in January, what happens each week of January. And then let's translate what happens each week in January to the calendar. And if you will do that connection, if you'll connect all those pieces, what did we do? We just went out into the future sometime, someday, and we drew a line straight back to today. And now what you're doing is you're taking the steps that are exactly in alignment. How many can see this would keep you on track and make you a lot more effective? How many are glad you came today? I'm glad you came today. I'm thrilled. So I'm guessing that I'm getting kicked off stage, but I want to, before I, before I go, I won't go uh, without some, um, go I won't go quietly, no, no way, but I want to say something before I go. So it's very traditional for me to, to end things uh, with a, a, a phrase that I've used or a, a piece that I've done for, for years now. And before I give that to you, I want to say just a couple things. First of all, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of our uh, Master Agent Club launch. Thank you for being part of the 2020 vision. We will certainly be doing this program and, and you know, I want your feedback. I want your, like, tell us where you, you got it this weekend when you started working on stuff, what really worked, what was confusing, what was hard. By the way, it's all hard. It's hard to do. It's like, this is a lot of work. How many get that? This is not the easy approach. The easy approach is wake up every day and wonder what you should do and then do something stupid, right? I mean, that's the easy approach. <laughs> But if you want to do something that's going to be purposeful, then this is really what it's going to take. So that said, I said to you earlier, you, you are bigger than you know. 
I know you're bigger than you know. And if you don't believe that, I want you to just for a, a short little while, maybe the next month, I want you to remember this meeting, remember what I just said to you, and I want you to borrow my faith in you because I know that you're bigger than you know, even if you don't. And sometimes it's hard to know that. Sometimes it's hard to be inside our own heads and have that sense of self. But I'm telling you, you are bigger than you know. Okay, with that in mind, I also want to tell you that what you do matters. Everything that you do matters. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it. it's like, you know, who's, who cares? Who's watching? What, what, what big deal is that? The thing is that we are models. We are models for each other. We're models for our neighbors. We're models for everybody. Do you know that every time that you hold yourself at the highest level, somebody is watching that? And today, by the way, everybody's watching everything, right? So when you play down, everybody sees that. So you're, you're either giving people permission to play small or you're showing people that it's possible to hold them high. You're giving people permission to do that. So I was watching a movie, which many of you'll remember. If you haven't ever watched it, you really I want to put it on your watch list. And that was a movie called Coach Carter. How many remember the movie? So people thought it was about basketball, but it really wasn't. It was about principles and character. It was about going for it. It was about so many character things. And this coach, real, real deal, Coach Carter, in Oakland, California, brought this team from nowhere, joined this team, got these people to talk to each other, to love each other, and built this in, uh, enormous influence on them. And at the very end of it, these are kids are in drugs and with guns and gangs, and it was like not a pretty place to be in sports. And what he did is brought them out of that and at the very end, the very end, there was a kid that had been right at, at high risk. He was just about to get in, into a gang situation, just about to get playing with guns and drugs. And Coach Carter pulled him out of it. And this kid gets up in the class, in the classroom right here, standing right there, and just stands up. And he started saying these words. I'm watching the movie in the theater. And I remember just crying. I mean, I'm just like, I was bawling like a baby. And I didn't even know what it was. I don't even know what the words were. I was just like looking for anything that resembled a, a phrase. And I Googled it, and it came up, and it told me what it was. And it said it was Nelson Mandela's inaugural speech in 1993 when he was made the president of uh, South Africa. Um, I was later corrected to say it wasn't his at all. He had borrowed it from Marianne Williamson. And a book that I would recommend to you is called um, A Return to Love. And in that book, she had this little paragraph, this little phrase that was called Our Deepest Fear. Some of you have heard it. It's been posterized. It's been put in plaques. But I want to say it to you before I bring up Allison and Brad. And so here's, here it is. Just listen, please. Don't take notes. Just listen. Be with me for a second. So what Marianne Williamson said is our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented and fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You're a child of God. You're playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that's within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our fear our presence automatically liberates others. Pretty well said, huh? Not me, her. <laughs> but I love that. And I just want to tell you that it's, it so represents to me who you are. You're a child of God. There's no playing small. We're in a big business. We're playing small in our big business. We're creating that little teeny project instead of the big one, the big hairy ass goal. Right? Let's do some big, hairy-ass things. What do you say? Yes. All right, guys. Come on up. All right. One more time, guys. Give a hand to Don. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.